she sounds good. Oh, I love that. That's my favorite part. <laughs> What's cracking, wieners? Good to see you again. We are in not the big, beautiful state of Maine, but the big, bodacious, beautiful state of Texas today. It's been a minute since I put down the white claws and picked up the camera, but it's good to be filming for you guys. Today's a big day. I've got very exciting news, and I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to film for you guys and just kind of keep you guys in the loop. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm very excited, and I'm pumped to share it with you and, and show you this new toy that I have, courtesy of some people, which I'll shout out here in a short bit. There's just a lot going on. I, I'm like wrapping everything up here in Texas, so I'm ready for Maine, and then I gotta do some stuff in Maine before we can start filming. But uh, wow, what an intro that was, very boring and long. Anyway, let's get after it. Lucky, you pumped for today's epi? Are you stoked, wiener? Made to the destination. This is the spot where um, I'm gonna be unveiling today's surprise. Oh, that's gotta be it. That thing looks unreal. I gotta go inside and uh, take care of some payments. But after that, we'll get down to business and show you guys, as you probably know, the new rig. Whoo, I am so pumped, this is unreal. <laughs> yes, that's the look right there. Dude, we're gonna go put her in the water right now and hopefully good. not sink her. You talking about me or the boat? Oh, I was talking about you. Oh, but that's nice. <laughs> hey, why are you barking at Cole? Figured it'd be befitting to do the maiden voyage with Cole. We're gonna take this boat out and splash it for the very first time. I am beyond stoked at the moment. We may even do some fishing too. He brought some crappie rods. Just gonna have David. I couldn't pick up this brand new boat and not splash it and not show it to you guys. So we're gonna fish on it for a bit and I'm gonna bring it back to the crib and I'm just gonna go over absolutely everything about this rig and what makes it special. Just like you, Lucky, you're so special. Yes, you are, you're so special. Well, I can say this for sure, it sounds a lot different. Just to kind of put this in perspective for you guys who are new to the channel, this is my first boat ever. Uh, I had a 16.5 low with a 60 horse Merc on the back. It was a gem, absolute beauty. So my first boat, spotted for like six grand off Craigslist. And then this right here was my second boat. This is the boat that I had right before this one. Still have it, it's currently up in Maine. It's a great boat, but it, it definitely is not this. This is like such a step above. We're talking about 50 extra horsepower. Uh, this is a Mercury Pro XS, by the way. This thing hums, it should, theoretically. Uh, it's a smaller boat, actually. It's an 18.5, but it should ride a little bit better. It's like their Pro V model, which means it's like a bass boat V hull hybrid, and it should hoot. It's a 200 horse on an 18.5. I'm excited. We're not gonna fully open it up, but we are gonna uh, kind of vary in between the RPMs and just get after it. I, I, what I really need to do right now is just shut the up and uh, get on the horn, and we're just gonna have a day of it. I'm pumped. All right, here we go. First trip. Trim down. All right, we're gonna start off with a little curl tail here. A little pink and white, it's my favorite. We got Cole in the foreground, just hung as. We're good. Oh, we're good, we're no, good. we're good. That was a drag on this, pretty locked down. <laughs> you guys going for tuna? Yeah. It is locked, locked. It's a 120 pound test. It's, a, it's a 120. This boat is smaller than my low, and it has a 112. <laughs> this, this, is, this might be my new favorite boat ever, period. Are we on yet? How, we, what was it like a month ago we saw people cranking fish over here cranking crappie yeah i mean they were like, in that stuff, were they in that stuff yeah. too remember this is repair because oh they weren't even fishing this or they were kind of oh i'm uh, there's one right there that's 100 percent of fish i can't really cast very far though i'm not so sure about this whole thing we're gonna try our very best though <laughs> you have a what oh my god that was quick goals in the back i got a wind on already there we go. Got some distance that time. Nothing like going for some crappie on a $60,000 brand new bass boat. Oh! Oh yeah, there's so much bait down there. Those little ones fight. <laughs> like actually pulling drag. That's pretty cool. Dude, those look like yellow bass. Yeah, they kind of do. They don't look like white bass. Oh, you guys let us know in the comments. That looks a lot like a yellow bass. I don't know if they're in here, but they just look beep a little boop. bit different. Little beep boop, beep boop. 
That's a little fish for a big boat. Got the juice. <laughs> wow. Nice. Wow. Yeah. That's about it. Wow. Yeah, I don't deserve to have nice things. Oh. No, that was just current. Sorry. All right, well, gang, this bite's just so damn hot that uh, our arms are pretty worn out, especially mine. My arms are extremely suited, so we're gonna head back to the ramp right now. It's gonna continue. I still need to go over the boat and share with you guys what exactly we're floating on right now because that's the whole point of today's episode, but I was just so anxious and so ready to get out in the water that I couldn't be bothered talking about this boat. I'd rather just fish off it. So we'll catch in the morning, review this boat, and show you guys this new toy that we have right here. Wieners, we're back. Welcome to the Guggen HQ. That was quite an interesting fishing sesh. Uh, I'm not sure what to think about that one, but at least we caught some fish on the new rig. Speaking of which, this is the part of the video you guys have probably been waiting for, the new boat. I just wanna say how fortunate and lucky and thankful I am for having this boat that I'm about to show you guys, courtesy of Mercury Marine. They've hooked all the Guggens up with new rigs. This one in particular is my new boat. As you know, first boat was a 16.5 low. The next boat, 19.8 low. Now, we are rocking a completely different company, a company that I've never really uh, used too much of, so I'm excited to learn a lot about this boat and share with you guys my overall thoughts and opinions. Let's get the basics out of the way. So the boat itself is an 1875 Pro V Bass by Lund. 18 foot 7 inches and it is the Pro V Bass model. Basically what that means is this boat is somewhat of a hybrid. It's the best of both worlds. It's kind of like a bass boat and it's kind of like a deep V. It maneuvers like a bass boat but it also rides like a deep V. So in big waters it's going to do really nicely but if we have to cut corners running up creeks it supposedly can also do that. So I'm really interested to run a boat like this. I've never run a genre of boat such as the one behind me, and I'm pretty pumped to see what it's all about. Okay, that's the boat, that's the hull. What we have powering this boat is something quite large and in charge. This is a 200 horsepower Pro XS Mercury Outboard. It's a four stroke. I've never owned a motor this damn big. They shouldn't have given me something that's fast because I mean, as you guys know, I like to go fast. My last motor was 150, this is a 200, and my last boat was bigger. So it was a smaller engine on a bigger boat, this is a bigger engine on a smaller boat. Do the math, this thing is gonna absolutely hoot, and I'm excited to really put this thing to the test and push it to its limits. It's just a beautiful motor to begin with, the, the red and the black and carbon fiber 200 decal on the side, it's just, mm, I love it. Uh, and of course, it's got a, I believe a Fury prop, is it a Fury? No, what is, who makes this? It's a Tempest, Mercury Marine Tempest Plus. I don't know how that compares to the Fury that's on my other outboard, but it looks fancy, it looks shiny, so it must be good, I suppose. So you guys know what the boat is, you know what powers it. Let's get inside of the boat and talk about some of the things that I think are really, really cool. Again, to be fair, this is my day one of ownership, so I'm gonna miss some stuff and I'm gonna probably not discover some cool things about this boat, and that's where a lot of you guys will probably come into play in the comment section below. I don't know, have any of you guys ever used a Lund before? I'm, I'm a new owner to this, this new company, so uh, any, like suggestions and tips, drop a comment down below. Okay, the front of the boat. We've got a couple cool things here. We've got a 12 inch Helix Hummingbird Graph. I like these Helixes over the Solixes, so that's the reason why I got this when ordering this boat. We have a much larger trolling motor. We are rocking with a one freaking 12. It's a little overkill in my opinion, but it's gonna be nice when I'm fishing big water. If I'm fishing rough water, this will really come into play. And the cool thing about this trolling motor too is that I've got the integrated transducer for my hummingbird mount. So that way I don't have like this loose transducer that could potentially get knocked off if I'm fishing shallow rocky water, which is good for me because I do a lot of that. Right here is the foot pedal for the trolling motor. Pretty basic, it's recessed, which is very nice. Uh, a spot to put your graph right there. We have a mounted graph just so this doesn't overheat on hot summer days. Front graph, new trolling motor, very juicy. First front right compartment, what's in here? Um, Nothing yet. Wow, it's a huge compartment. Do you guys see how big this is? Just look at this. I can fit my whole ass leg in there. That's crazy. I did not expect this front to be so deep and huge, but it is, which is nice. So I can put, I guess, tackle trays in there. Then we have another one, assuming it's the same. Yep, lots of space, lots of room. I very much dig it. Cool, so we got two compartments in the front. I would have thought there'd have been more up here, but I guess not, probably more electronic stuff. And then up here to the right. Oh wow, this is nice. Wow, this is so fancy, it's hydraulic. How sick is that? We got more compartments. This is humongous. I bet I can, oh, yep, 100%. <laughs> I can literally fit in this compartment, that's how big it is. Like comfortably, I'm 6'1", and I'm just just snug in this, in this right compartment. That is the beauty of this boat. From what I've been told, there's just so much room. Since it is technically a V-hull, 
it's a much deeper boat. I can fit more gear in here. You guys probably know I carry way too much gear on me. So this is pretty much the ideal boat for someone like myself. Wow, that's insane. I can really fit. Look at this. I'm in the whole compartment on an 18 foot boat. That just doesn't happen. Okay, then over here, same deal. This is the left compartment. I just got some, um, I guess, like the box for my Helix. That's pretty neat, I suppose. Uh, some boring cords. You guys don't care about that. Then we've got, uh, I'm guessing this is the boat cover. Although there's two. That's weird. There's a two part boat cover. We'll figure that out later, but uh, first things first, I just want to show you guys all the space. So we've got two, or I guess four, very large compartments, two up front, two smaller ones, which you can barely even consider small, and then you've got these two monster ones where you could fit a human body. That sounded wrong, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> it's pretty sick. Awesome, very cool, I love it already. I just love it already, day one of ownership, and this is like already my new favorite boat. No offense to the, the old low over there, or the low up in Maine, but this thing's got it. And there you have it, that is the front half of the Lund 1857 something, I forget the name, but yeah. Front half, looking good. Trail motor, graph, compartments. Um, oh wait, actually I forgot about this. What is here? I'm guessing rod locker. Oh my God, it's huge. Look at all those rod slots. You could fit a butt ton in there. Okay, so this is the rod locker where you put all the rods, hence the name. Kind of interesting though, it's apparently also where your batteries are at. Take a look at this. This is such an interesting design. I've never seen this in any sort of boat where your rods are on top of your batteries, but it's kind of nice because it shifts a lot of the weight towards the front, so this boat is probably gonna ride a lot better when you're going at higher speeds. Never seen anything like this, but it's pretty unique. Also, the, the three bank charger is up here too, so that way, you can charge the batteries and then also have your rods. I can see this being somewhat inconvenient if you've got a ton of rods in here, but if you've got a few sticks, just move them out to the deck and work on your batteries. But yeah, I need three batteries to run just my trolling motor. And it's like a huge rod locker. You can fit, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, comfortably fifteen rods in this locker. I don't even think I have fifteen rods. What a gem this thing is I, every I, again this is my first time actually walking through this boat and sharing it with you guys so i'm also uh learning a lot about this rig as we go along and film this oh my god do you guys see me sweating right now i'm dying it's like 107 degrees right now in this warehouse it feels like it's 120. uh anyway we're gonna persevere this i'm doing my best right now just excuse the uh amount of sweat that's coming off my face he's hot anyway let's keep going let's keep going okay front of the boat you guys got the gist lots of fish are gonna be caught right here okay let's move to i guess the seats these seats are pretty sweet they're not as big as the ones in the low the white claw low but they're comfortable and the cool thing is is they're actually adjustable i can move forward and backward how convenient is that these honestly this boat is just light years ahead of what i have been fishing off of that being my first boat of course which is six grand off craigslist and then my last boat which was the 198 low so you've got adjustable seats both seats are adjustable that one including here's the the cockpit here's where all the business happens where most of the uh, ripping and wrapping takes place speedometer fuel gauge uh tachometer trim gauge thingy uh, a bunch of switches you've got your horn oh hang on there we go you get your horn Oh, why is it working? Hey, work horn. <laughs> it's a really loud horn in case you're wondering. Uh, nav lights, interior lights, live well, recirculation, bilge, accessory, nothing fancy, just the normal switches you probably find in uh, any old boat. There's a couple of cool things I wanna point out about this boat. Unlike my last one, it doesn't have a hot foot. All the power takes place right here in the throttle. This is uh, something I'm gonna have to get used to. My first boat had a hand throttle, but this is gonna be a little bit different just because I have been using the hot foot recently. You can actually turn the key on on and then start the boat just by pressing this little button. Take a look. Unreal, again, that's probably not good to be starting the motor out of the water, but demonstration purposes. Just down to my right, we've got a head unit for two speakers, and they absolutely bump. I've never owned a boat with speakers, and this is just such a, I don't know, such a cool addition. I know it's not fishing related, but it's nice, you know, from when you're going to spot to spot, you can bump some Avril Lavigne, but uh, yeah, I think the company's called Rockford, and we tested them out in the lake today, and they kick. It, these are these are perfect speakers. We might even add some more too, just knowing the type of person that I am. <laughs> yeah, 
These will do. These will freaking do. All right, I don't want to get copyrighted. You've got your trim over here too. A nice little cubby to put like your phone in your wallet so that's not flying out when you're going 80 miles an hour down the lake. Remote control for the trolling motor so I can sit up here and control my Minn Kota. You also have this Hummingbird 10 inch Helix opposed to the 12 inch. So I'll use this for my mapping and navigation and, and things of that nature. But yeah, it's, it's a nice craft. These Helixes, they're, they're simple, they're easy, they're straightforward. And I like them. I've missed something. This is a compartment that I've never had in any boat that I've ever purchased. That being a damn cooler it's uh, actually removable and the company is igloo which is funny enough it comes with a little tiny igloo cooler which is pretty neat and uh, it, yep sounds like there's some stuff in there oh what do you know some some seltzers some Bud Light seltzers uh, but yeah that is <laughs> that is actually really nice I like that a lot it's such a simple addition to a boat but I've never had a cooler so I'm pretty psyched about that for some reason over here you got another little compartment that buttons down I could probably put like camera gear in there anything that I don't want to get sopping wet and then we've got two more cup holders I think total this boat has five cup holders you get five total drinks in here this spot right here is just so comfortable which I love I mean it's not that my previous boat wasn't comfortable but it was a bass boat it's it's less frills and more just about fishing whereas this is fishing balanced with just being comfortable and that's all that really matters to me speaking of comfortability this boat can actually fit uh, four people very comfortably because it comes with these foldable seats right here just look at that you've got one seat right here you've got the driver right there You've got uh, Jimmy right here, and then you've got Ricky back here. Whoever designed this boat really thought about other people in mind and bringing other people fishing. That's what's important, in my opinion. When I fish, I don't like to fish alone. I like to fish with other folks. So, I mean, I can bring four people out here and we can go rip some lips. And while we're back here too, we'll talk about the live wells. Very big and spacious, deep live wells. Perfect for putting walleyes in there. I'm a big walleye guy. Love, <laughs> love me some walleyes. Fish tend to get a little bit rowdy in the live well, so if they try to jump and they bump their heads on this, they're not bumping their heads on straight aluminum. This is foam padding, which is better for the fish and better for me because I don't want to kill fish in my live well if we're, you know, messing around with pictures or something like that. And there's a separator too in case I want to fish some derbies, which I probably will never do, but it's there. Lucky, what do you think of the boat so far? Do you like it? I mean, there's a lot of space for you to roll around in, huh? What do you think? Oh, okay, just sniff your butt. That's, that's cool. You know what? I'll get back to you later. I actually don't even know what's in here. Oh wow, more storage. Like, lots of storage. I could fit a whole wiener dog in there. This battery starts this juicy motor right here. You got a lot of electrical in here, I don't even know. Oh, you've also, oh God, what'd I just do? I touched something. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't good. Okay, that about does it. I feel like there's a lot that I probably missed going over with this new rig, but again, it's day one of ownership. I'm gonna learn a lot about this boat as I use it the rest of the 2020 and 2021 season. It's, it's a great rig. I've not even caught a single fish off of it. And I'm absolutely in love. Big motor. It rides nice. It just fits everything that I need out of a boat. It's perfect for filming out of it. It's perfect for bringing other people out. And I mean, look at this. The dog even loves it. She's even claimed her seat. Is that your spot? Is that where the wiener sits? I thought you drove. I thought you were the captain. Oh, but there you have it. There is the rig. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour and learned some things about a boat that is, in my opinion, very unique. If you guys have any questions, drop it in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. Again, this is day one of ownership. I feel like I missed a lot throughout this tour, but I'm gonna learn a lot as well as I continue to use this throughout the season. I do wanna make a very important note that things like this don't happen overnight. My first boat ever was a $100 boat that I bought from a uh, country club. It had holes in it. And if you guys actually wanna go watch that video where I tried to restore this boat, I'll leave it linked down below, but I'll also kind of play it as I'm talking right now. Uh, it's just crazy to think that that's where I started and this is where we're at now. I'm honestly so blessed to have a rig like this and so fortunate and uh, this is just something I kind of want to relay to you guys because I don't want you to think that this stuff happens within a day or a month or even a few years. It took me pretty much a decade to get to this point and have a rig like this. This is truly a dream come true and I got to thank the folks over at Mercury and Lund for making this happen. And uh, it's just a testament. If you keep working towards something, if you keep trying hard, it's something you're truly passionate about and that you are really ambitious about, you can make it happen. Anyway, uh, I'm sweating my nuts off right now. I'm gonna close out today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, drop a comment uh, down below, drop any questions you have, and I'll do my best to answer them. I appreciate the view, thank you guys so much. Stay safe, and as always, folks, keep fishing, never stop.